I don't even know what are helping verbs in English. Why are there so many? <gasps> I mean, it's my fault that I should have listened in class at primary school. Until I'm rambling. Hello, I'm Jia Kang. Mm, today, I will be showing you how I study Korean. I've been studying this language for close to a year now, and with quarantine coming along, there is just a lot of time for me to just study more. I don't know if I can qualify myself as an intermediate learner, so I'll show you how I learned. Let's just put it as a beginner stage. So shall we get to it? So now it's 3.05 in the afternoon, and usually how I start my study routine is with this book. This is it's my go-to book. It's Korean Grammar, The Complete Guide to Speaking Korean Flu... Naturally. <laughs> naturally. This book is really concise and it's just good for me to follow up in terms of gradual progression in this language which was something that I was really looking for when I was considering to buy a, a language book because it just makes learning so much smoother and I don't have to go all around finding bits of information here and there but this book has, own, has its own cons because it's just text after text after text studying alone my pose some problems and it is in fact stated that this book is recommended to be studied with a tutor so I'll see where I left off I left off at sentence endings and I'll be continuing on from there I usually keep my notes on a small notebook so that I can bring around or assess it easily should have so this lesson is on should have another expression that uses a model verb or an auxiliary in English is should have the Korean version is a rather complex set of expressions that you can learn as units. The first expression that describes should have is ulul go gleta. It's shortened from ulul gusu gleta. The main verb gleta is optional, is casual speech. Okay. Uh, a sentence example is ongulul do yoshimhi hal go gleso. I should have studied harder. Oh, there is one thing. So I want to. That is, don't be too bothered if you're not able to remember vocabulary or just don't be too hard on yourself. Because it's not your first language and it's understandable. Words don't retain your brain. It just takes a lot of time for you to keep it in your long-term memory. That is what I realized about myself. That also brings me on to tip number two. You want to make sure that you learned, you pick up Hangul, which is Korean alphabet system, right from the very beginning as soon as you start on this language. If you haven't mastered that yet, remember to do that as soon as possible. <laughs> because if you learned from picking up phrases without knowing the alphabets, then you will be over-reliant on romanization and that's not the most ideal. What's even more fascinating is that when you learn Hangul, right, it teaches you to read all words there is in Korean. Going back to the book. You might have heard a similar sounding expression. With no space before gone. This one is different. Ulul gol expresses the speaker's guess or supposition uh, and is shortened from Ulul goya or Ulul goyeyo. Ah, so Ulul gol gol kalitha is not the same as Ulul goyeyo. There is another expression to imply should have, which is ji kalitha. Okay, so this ji kalitha. When it's applied to you, or, or let's say to me, it takes on a blaming tone. It implies that it's blaming me. So for example, It's trying to say, you should have studied harder. Why didn't you study harder? Okay. So for example, in this sentence, it says I don't know the word chap. Usually when I don't know a word, I'll search on Papago Dictionary. The word that I don't know, chamta. I assume that's the dictionary form. So this is what I found, chamta. Endure, withstand, fight back, be patient, suppress, control. But in the context of the sentence, what is it again? 
잡지 글리서요. It is using to suppress to control because the sentence said you should have held back your tongue in the meeting. Or at least that's what the sentence that the book gave. Right. I found I found the definition on 참다. Right. And what I do with new words and picking up vocabulary is that I write them on a post-it note. For Korean, right, one word can mean so many things. So I usually don't pay too much attention on what this word can mean, but focus on learning what I have learned. Does that make sense? Like in this case, it means to control, to suppress. So I'll just focus on that. I can keep a note on what this word could potentially mean in other contexts. But to just make learning more manageable, I will just pretend I didn't see all those other words. So to suppress, to control. Usually once I'm done writing my post-it note, I'll paste it on this wall. It's just within sight. The next day, I'll review it and gradually keep it in my long-term memory. And that is how I pick up new words. And I feel with post-it notes, there is so much words that you can only fill it here to keep learning new words manageable for me because I hate memorizing. I just keep a maximum of three post-it notes on this wall until I have completely registered all the words on the post-it note into my small brain. Then I'll take it off the wall and then the process repeats. Moving on. So the third expression is 어서야 하다 아니면 됐다 I got it now. All this, the three expressions that we have learned have different connotations in terms of who you're addressing. Let's say I want to use the expression I should have, I should use the first one, which is Then if I have the intention to, let's say, blame it on you for not doing something, then I would use And the last one that I'm learning, when you are addressing a third person and using should have, you should use also ya hatta or tweta. Oh it says here that this ending can also be used for first person and second person. Okay, simple sentence. Chongpuna Chong Cheke Ole Chone Shil Chi Heso Ya Heta Wow There is so many words I don't know. <laughs> quick, quick, quick dictionary search. To implement, since they are talking about the policy. Chok Shinho. Shinho means traffic light. Chok Shinho means red light. Chok Shinho e kill when you add G to this third expression, it becomes osoyaji. You are kind of connoting the sense that eh, you're trying to put for you should have known better not to blank. Okay, moving on. It's to learn about wheels, shells, woods, and coots. Some Korean endings have multiple English meanings and vice versa. You have to get to the core of the core meaning of the Korean endings as you add them to your repertoire of things you know how to express. Here are some sentences with Korean endings you already know that translate using a variety of modal verbs in English. I think I will show you the pitch on this. So the first one, 지금 좀은 집에 있을 거야. They will be home by now. Or something like, she must be very happy. 진짜 죽겠다. Would you like some tea? 차좀 드시겠어요? These are all endings that I've come across and it just carries the meaning of modal verbs in English. Okay, next lesson. How English helping verbs are expressed in Korean? What are English helping verbs? Mm. I don't even know what are helping verbs in English. You know, learning Korean and all, I realize that I didn't give a lot of attention when I was learning grammar and English back in primary school. And I kind of regret it a lot. I mean, 
I picked it up in secondary school, but it was a really hard time. Secondary school, when I started off sec 1, my English was terrible. I have no idea what's a noun, what's a verb, I have completely no clue because they expect you to have completely learned it in primary school. So they don't cover it anymore. All I can remember when we were doing English lessons in, cl in classes was just going through passages, comprehension. There was just very little grammar lessons. I mean, it's my fault that I should have listened in class at primary school. So if... <laughs> I don't know if any primary school is watching this. Listen in your teacher's class. Don't fool around. No, no. Language is important. Knowing your grammar is important. Okay, next lesson is on English helping verbs. So like examples are one, two. It seems like, what else? That's all? Oh, that's all. I forgot to add that usually when I'm dealing with a very content heavy book, I like to read ahead and break down the chapter. So it gives like a scan to what this topic has to teach. And from there, it just directs your learning. And you're more clear what you're going to get out of at the end of the day, reading this chapter. So one, two, and it seems like there are tons of expressions for this. I'll see how much I can cover. One, two, the first expression. <gasps> I suddenly highlight <laughs> out of the page. It's okay. Okay, the first expression. Oh, that's pretty easy. Covered this before. It's le What does that sound so singlish? It's a very casual future tense. It means I wonder or I feel like doing something. Is it just me? Or it's getting really hot in Singapore. There is this one night that I was sleeping and I was just I woke up from sweat. I usually don't wake up at night because I'm a heavy sleeper. But I actually woke up from actually sweating too much. It was hard to get back to sleep also. So for this book, it also has exercises for you to do at the end of every chapter and it breaks down into subsections in the chapter which helps you gauge your understanding in a systematic way. And this is just another plus point for this book. Usually on a heavy day, I would do about 1-2 to two hours on this book and move on to the next item. And this next item, let me like get rid of this first. This next task that I'm going to do is Talk to Me in Korean. This is the website, Talk to Me in Korean. You can create a free account with Facebook. And once you do that, you're able to assess level 1 to level 9 courses. Each course has about 30 plus videos, I think. If you're wondering what level you should start at, you can go to this hyperlink, test your Korean. It's a series of questions to gauge how much of Korean do you know exactly. And once you do that, you're good to start off. Moving on, I'll be using this DTMIK website for the next part of my study routine. Usually, how I like to use this website is to browse through each level and just pick up lessons that I'm not familiar with. So now I'm at level 4. The first lesson looks unfamiliar to me. It is to imply the more something than the more something. It's a myon, a lil slow. I use this notebook when I'm studying talk to me in Korean. Cute, right? So in TTMIK, there is a sound audio track that accompanies each lesson and you can hear it to improve your pronunciation because pronunciation is really important too in learning a language. I feel like I'm rambling. Usually I don't switch on the audio just so I can move on faster. For this lesson in level 4, you will learn how to say the more something A than the more something B. The more A is expressed through the verb ending, uh, little, and the letter the more B part is expressed through another verb. Okay, let me write that down. What they are saying here is the first part of the more you will attach su look to the end. So let's say the sentence the more delicious it is, the better it sounds. I would add su look to for ashis su look, the more delicious it is, and then chal paloyo, then it will sound better. Second example. The busier you are, the more important your health is. Yeah, 
using a little slope with a muon. Using a little slope on its own is already enough, but sometimes the speaker, speaker wants to emphasize his or her point a little better. This can be achieved by using the same verb stem that would be used with a little slope and attaching it to a muon. Uh, the more the better, it can be simply mana slope juayo. But when the speaker wants to add emphasis on his point, he can say mana muon, mana slope juayo. I think I get it. Another example, let's say the cheaper it is, the more of it you can buy. Sal suluk mani, sal su, sal su soyo is what you can say, but if the speaker wants to add emphasis, then he would say sa myun, sal suluk mani, sal su is soyo. The expression ka suluk comes from kata plus l l suluk, and it really means the more you go. However, it is used as more of a sad expression, which means more and more so in time, or as time goes by. Ooh, if you use it in ka suluk choyo, you're trying to say it keeps getting colder. I think I can also say kiasu chuo. And if I want to say I'm getting better at my Korean, I can put it chonen kasulok hangu gole chae. Another tip. I think this is tip three. You need to ensure you're being exposed to this new language, getting to hear this language more your daily lives. For me, that is true watching Korean dramas and I enjoy it a lot. Not only that it will help you improve your language learning, but it also helps you to keep motivated and in the long term achieve more goals. Find a way to hear more Korean. Podcasts, K-pop are other ways that you can keep getting yourself exposed to Korean. Okay. And that ends off the lesson of a mule, a little Okay. Oh, I'm done. Done with going through TTMIK. I don't know if I mentioned, but TTMIK actually has an online store where you can order their books. If you do want some physical books, their books are very aesthetic and very conducive for learning. This is not sponsored. But it is just that good that I want to recommend. So they do have an online store, and I got some of them. This book I have read through this book, Real Life Korean Conversations for Beginners. It provides audio, sound audio, to all the sample dialogues that are presented in this book. For me, I find that it really helps improve my Korean pronunciation tremendously. I actually got the intermediate state uh, book as well, but I have not started on that. And another book that I got was Survival Korean. Before going to Korea last year, I read up on this book and it helped me a lot in knowing some phrases that I can use when I explore Seoul. That's it for TTMIK. Usually the second task of working with TTMIK would spend me some time about half an hour to an hour-ish. Once I'm done with that, I stop. In fact, on a daily basis, I don't do this much Korean because what I realized over the past year of learning Korean, I would study Korean intensely for like two, three weeks. I study about like two, three hours every day and then I get burnt out after that three weeks and I don't touch Korean for like two, three months. And then when I eventually come back to studying Korean, I found that I forgot so much. Picking that up again was difficult. It was more effective for me to include learning Korean in a daily routine. Do like a 30 minutes every day kind of thing. Going small in the long run will really do you a big favor in improving your language. So that's tip number four. Okay, there is this one more book that I would like to recommend. It is this book, Mastering Conversational Korean for Beginners. I've completed this book. Overall, this book covers really the, the basics in Korean and it's a really good book to start off if you're a beginner and let's say you just mastered Hangul. But at the end of this book, you'll be able to converse in Korean, just basic conversations. It's much more reader-friendly also. Another thing to add for this book is that it explains Korean culture in terms of the hierarchy system, holidays in Korea, so on and so forth. And these two books, I actually got it here in Singapore. I got them both at Kinokuniya Bookstore in Singapore. Popular doesn't have much uh, language books as far as I go. 
so I had to look up smaller bookstores in Singapore. Oh, I forgot to mention, TTMIK is based in Korea, so when you order the books from them, you do expect shipping fees to be imposed as well. I have one last tip before I end this video. It's tip number five. Learning this language via book resources, online resources is good and all, but you do need to apply using this language. So the best way is to talk to native Korean. But how do you do that when you don't have any native Korean friends? You can use this app called HelloTalk. <laughs> so HelloTalk is a platform where you are able to meet native Koreans and converse either through text or calls. That way you can really apply using the language. You just be confident. It's okay to make mistakes, register whatever that you have learned. Applying it is a whole different story. You gotta really try it. That would be the most effective way of internalizing whatever you have learned in Korean. It's 5.33. We have spent about two and a half hours. You have looked at my study routine for learning Korean. And if you are still here with me, thanks for sticking to the end. If you like this video, like this video. <laughs> I'll see what else I can do on this channel while I'm still at home. So till next time, bye bye.